In this presentation, we're going to look at a simple example of using the rules of probability. We're going to apply it to electrical circuits. Now, just let's remind ourselves about uh, some important rules. Firstly, we'll look at the multiplicative rule of probability, which is just a rearrangement of the conditional probability rule. So that's the main part of it there. But you can, might also, uh, also express it like this. Okay. Uh, or you can also express this bit like that. The main thing is about the multiplicative rule is that it gives us the rule for independent events. So if two, uh, we have two events A and B and they are said to be independent if the probability of A given B is the probability of A, if they are equal to each other. What that means is, importantly, is that probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. That's an important one for this example here. So I'm going to move on from that. So the probability of A times the probability of B. So we also have the uh, probability, the law of total, uh, the the law of total probabilities, and we have two complementary events here: the B and the complement of B, and then we have the intersections of A with both of those events. So the probability of A given B times the probability of B, the probability of A given the pro the complement of C times the, the probability of complement of C, together they will give you the probability of A. Now, uh, just one I've not mentioned here really, and now in hindsight I should have, is the addition rule. I'll just write this one in so. So, uh, this is also quite an important one. What we have here is the probability of A uh, and B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B. Sorry, uh, let me backtrack there. Union. Uh, minus the probability of A and B, okay? So this is union here, and this is intersection. So that is the addition rule, and that's actually quite an important rule as well, and we will use this one also. So let's look at our example here. What we have here is a circuit, or, and is, is, so the, 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 the circuits here are as follows. Uh, this component here, 1, circuit 2, circuit 3, circuit 4, and circuit 5. And they're sort of all joined together. They're essentially relays, and they are uh, connect, uh, provide a, they're part of a broader network that be, goes between A and B. And if uh, the probability of each circuit is working or is closed is as follows. So the, the circuits might be open or closed, these relays. And, uh, for example, the probability that circuit 1 is closed and allowing uh, current to flow through it is 0 0.70. Likewise, probability of the circuit 2 is closed and allowing the current through is 0 0.60, and so on. Now, let's just look at this. If all the relay circuits function independently, what is the probability that a current flows between A and B? Let's consider this here for a second. So the current must flow either through A or from A up through circuits 1 and 2 and then through circuit 5 till it gets to B. Otherwise, it can do this. It can go through, start at circuit A and then go through circuits 3 and 4 and then up through 5 that way. Okay. So it must go one way or the other, or potentially both options are open to it. So what's the probability that the current can flow from A to B? So let's consider this here. So first off, let's consider we're going to um, have two branches. I'm going to call the upper branch B1, and it comprises of circuit 1 and circuit 2. And we're going to have the lower branch B2, this and it consists of C3 and C4, circuits 3 and 4. And we'll disregard C5 until later on. We'll just make sure, we'll figure out uh, the probability of getting to this point here just before circuit 5. So the upper branch, uh, B1, we're going up this way first. What is the probability that it can get uh, over here? 
Well, it must C1 and C2 must be uh, closed and allowing the current to flow. So these are independent events, as we sort of stated there. And so this is the probability of C1 times the probability of C2. And I just sort of stated there earlier that that is 0 0.7 times 0 0.6, and that's equal to 0 0.42. Likewise, we can do the same thing for the lower branch, uh, C3 and C4, this way here. And what is the probability of uh, going through C3 and C4? We could just do the same thing here. That is, the probability of the lower branch is, uh, let's just write this out here, the lower branch is 0 0.65 times 0.65 and that is equal to 0.4225 okay I actually where did these numbers come from you can just check back here uh, pause and check back that table I showed a few minutes ago so uh, those are those two um, important calculations we're going to continue from that so the uh, uh, there we go so the next part is what is the upper probability that the upper branch or the lower branch are both work and we'll put in that u there so this is the probability of one that it can go through the upper branch plus the probability that it can go through the lower branch minus the probability that both branches are open okay so this is uh, uh so we have uh, this is the addition rule here let's make a note of that again and the addition rule uh, means that it we ha so the upper branch or the the lower branch or the upper branch equals the probability of the upper branch plus the probability of the lower branch minus the probability of both of them so that is equal to 0 0.42 plus 0 0.4225 what about this part here well if you, you just think about it again these are independent events So what we have here is minus the probability of 0 0.42 times 0 0.4225. Let's work on that out a little bit more. 0 0.42 plus 0 0.4225 minus doing a bit of calculator that worked there. 0 0.17745. I'll just leave it the full thing. We can round it at the end. And that will give us an answer of 0 0.66505. Okay. So that's the answer for this part here. Now this is just before it gets to circuit two. Now I'm just going to go back here a second now. There we go. So we the probability of it being able to get here is not 0.66505. Now the probability of this part here, C5. Now this is not 0.97. If you just recall that table we had at the start. So the probability of getting from this point here, this X point X here, to B, it means that it's uh, not 0.97 from getting X to B, because circuit 5 is closed. So essentially that is the last thing we have to do, and we are going to simply multiply that, not point, uh, 0.97 by 0.65505, and the answer is therefore not 0.645. And put it, put it, finally putting in a bit of rounding error there at the end. Okay.